Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Data Cloud Now. I'm currently in the DCN studio in San Mateo, California, where I am delighted to be joined by Sandy Gupta, co-founder and COO, along with Mike Sutton, CTO at Innovacer. Gentlemen, such a pleasure to be with both of you here today. Great to be here. Good to meet you, Ryan. Sandy, at Innovacer, you are committed to accelerating healthcare innovation and transformation. What's the data showing you? You put those three words together, that's like transformation, innovation, and healthcare, and nobody thinks they can work together. And we have seen that over the period of the last eight years, uh, working in the healthcare ecosystem. When we got into healthcare, the big thing was that, hey, you know what, it is just going to be on-prem, and everyone wanted to keep their data in on-prem kind of servers. I think we have seen that journey happen over a period of time, that how the data has gone from on-prem to a cloud kind of a setup. And once now the data is available on the cloud, that's where the real innovation and transformation has started at this point in time. Within Innovasa, we are committed to it in three ways for our customers, which we call as the three pillars of innovation slash transformation. The first pillar is the value transformation, and what that means is that for a lot of our customers, we have to showcase that, hey, you know what, with the data on the cloud, how can you now use this data to better perform on certain metrics? And these metrics could be on the basis of cost, quality, utilization, so all the things related to delivering better healthcare at a lower cost, so that goes in our first kind of vertical. The second, or the second pillar, call it the vertical, is more about the experience side of the equation because now with all this data in the cloud infrastructure, you should be able to deliver a better experience for your patients because that's what all the healthcare is about. And then the third vertical stands for that on the productivity sides, how can you help your providers deliver better care, spending lesser time in front of their machines, but more time with the patient who is sitting in front of them. So improve their productivity in a way that it gives them more patient front time and less of the administrative work. So again, happy to report that we are seeing more and more kind of engagement with our customers, with our large providers that are out there in terms of that they are latching on to this transformation journey. Healthcare has always been more use case driven, so just the infrastructure is not able to fulfill that outcome. So you have to have to make it more use case driven that we have done through our three verticals that we just talked about. Sandy, really appreciate those insights. Now I want to dive into the details and the numbers speak for themselves. Over a billion dollars in healthcare cost savings, over 39 million patients on the health cloud, over 96,000 providers across over 1,600 locations. From a macro standpoint, what trends are you noticing, Sandy? Absolutely, so we are seeing that there is more and more adoption of this because, as I said earlier, right, it is the outcomes that drive the action in healthcare. Right. So for us, putting outcomes before everything else, because again, if we went and pitched to a customer saying that, hey, you know what, here is an infrastructure offering, and there is a funny story over there, when we went and started selling into the providers, and we said that, hey, we will help you bring the data on the cloud, every single meeting we got kicked out. Because the reason was that the CIO or the decision maker was like, hey, you know what, where is the ROI? What is the impact that you will produce? So the numbers that you showcased, I think that's the biggest kind of thing that we tell our customers that, okay, you know what, just last year, for the value stack that we were talking about, we saved our customers a billion dollars. And that's like a significant amount of debt, if you think at a macro kind of level. So those kind of numbers are important for the customer to see the ROI themselves, and that's what drives the adoption from our perspective. So from a trend perspective, we see that number increasing. Uh, we are currently at close to 100,000 providers now across the country. We are anticipating that number will increase to 150,000 by the end of this year, because the ROI helps drive more adoption, and it's like that kind of a positive cycle that once you get on, the better the result, the more the adoption, but yeah. The momentum continues The momentum to build. continues, uh, yeah. And Mike, from your perspective. Yeah, and what we see from a technological perspective is you know, the last 15 years after the meaningful use legislation was put in place, we've seen a stockpiling of data. I mean, the, the, uh, the medical record systems are out there, they're creating digitization of data that's never been accessible before. Um, we're seeing a transparency in that data for the first time really in the history of healthcare. And that's, it's by far not, not done yet, but what we're seeing is, is that the work that the physicians and clinicians are doing of calculating transactions and capturing those in the systems, we're seeing a large amount of data that we can now take advantage of and start 
activating that data and get actual use out of it and make the promises of meaningful use come true. So I would say, you know, Sandy talked about our provider community. In the health system provider space, I think it's 100% are kicking off data strategies of how to take advantage of this particular data. And then the other one too is we have this data on the backs of physicians and clinicians that have to, to do documentation. It was a burden that's been put on them. And we think this is now the payback where we can start making their solution, making their lives easier because we can help aid them now with the analytics that are put on the cloud and used for these data environments. Always putting the customer first across the broader ecosystem. Yeah, exactly. Great to hear, Mike. I want to dive in to your mission which is to connect and curate the world's healthcare information and make it accessible and useful. How pivotal is the data cloud in allowing you to deliver on your mission? And how does its ease of use allow you to create the best possible outcomes for your customers? Sandy would love your perspective. No, absolutely. See, like it, if the cloud wasn't there, we wouldn't be in business. It's as simple as that. Because at that scale, when you're talking about like the amount of data that you're talking about, if you were doing it in a prem, on-prem kind of an environment, as I talked earlier, it's just not possible. So our first value creation for our customers was that, hey, we'll bring your data, which is an on-prem kind of a system, on the cloud. Now, once you have created a cloud infrastructure layer, which has got all the relevant data in a unified data model, then you can start your downstream analytics and you can start your downstream kind of applications to deal with it, right? So I would say that this entire data cloud has been very fundamental for us because without it, as an infrastructure layer level, you just cannot deliver on any of the use cases, you cannot deliver on any of the ROI, and that's one of the biggest advantages our customers see. A lot of times you would see that, hey, you know what, they have got these huge kind of, let's say, uh, and a lot of like, again, healthcare providers, payers, as well as payviders, they would end up having a cloud strategy with one of the major kind of cloud payers in the ecosystem. But the challenge would be that they do not know how to bring the data from their on-prem into the cloud in a unified data model that can yield all those kind of outcomes that they were anticipating. So from our perspective, it becomes an extremely important part of our solution and offering and a brand promise to our customers. But yeah, Mike, if you would want to add more to that. Yeah, well having probably a little more history than Sandy in the old days, you know, we had to pull, do all sorts of gymnastics and tricks just to handle the first V of big data, which was the volume piece. You know, it wasn't that long ago that distributed databases was we had to break everything up into pieces and synchronize them and replicate them and we created, well we created a lot of internet traffic moving data around and all that. So if you think about that now is, you know, the first, the first V of, of big data is volume. The data cloud's given us the ability now to handle this in one place like we've never had before. And so that, that just, a lot of that, that, you know, extra work that we had to do to manage that data is gone. You know, the second part is the velocity part. How do you get data? Almost everybody we talk to now, our customers are interested in real-time analytics. They want to be able to make decisions, you know, in the moment, at the point of care. Well, that's also, the cloud has come to the rescue on that, is that we can move data, you know, we can stream the data, we, we have synchronization of information, and it can get in the cloud and into the customer's hands in milliseconds, where before, you know, Sadly, some of that ingestion techniques could take days or at least nightly you know, in batch type jobs. So I think the data cloud has solved the first two big Vs of the big data, the volume and velocity. Fortunately for Innovacer, that leaves the last two Vs, which is the variety of data, and, and we have a great deal of variety in the healthcare space with all the different medical record systems, payer systems, um, um, lab type environments. None of them are standardized yet. And you know, there's some great strides we're making in that area, but we, be, we need to be able to deal with the variety of that data. And that's one of the things that Innovacer, Sandy talked about normalization. That's a big of one of our, our attributes, which leaves the last and by far the most tricky is the veracity of the data, is how can you trust that data? We're working with people that are um, extremely precise. A physician is not somebody- They have to be. They have yeah. to be, that's their job. You're dealing with human lives. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, nothing more important, Charlie. Yeah. yeah, Yeah. so we have to, you know, in veracity, I looked it up in the dictionary, it means devotion to truth. Yeah. That's, a, that's a perfect definition of what we do to get that data to a point where it can be trusted by not only the physicians and the clinicians and the people providing care, which are the number one priority, but the data scientists, the business executives are trying to make operational decisions on that. And so, so to me, 
this is just moving along that of getting those four V's filled on and the data cloud you know, has given us a huge step forward. And like Sandy said, we wouldn't be in business on those second V's if it weren't for the data cloud. Great to hear how Snowflake's platform is having a direct impact for you both on a day-to-day on -day basis. I'm so glad you mentioned trust. Top of mind across the board right now for most executives is Gen AI, and I want to dive into this topic a little bit with both of you. What impact do you see this technology having on the healthcare industry, and what should leaders be doing now in order to be successful into the future? Sam. Sure, sure. Again, so Gen AI has been a very pivotal moment in my opinion for healthcare, right? Like if you look at the major technological advancements that have happened in healthcare over the last, let's say 15 years, there was a high tech act that ensured that everything got digitized in the first place because unless everything gets digitized, you cannot do any, because there is no data to act on otherwise, right? So that happened in 2008, 2010 kind of period. I think the second major advancement came when start, people started moving from on-prem to on-cloud kind of a setup because that to Mike's point helped with the two Vs, which is the volume and the velocity aspect of it because otherwise you just did not have the ability to handle that kind of data as a part of it. I think the third kind of pivotal moment is now when this AI kind of thing has come in and AI that can be trusted. I think there is a lot of buzzword around AI that happened from the period of 2015 to 2021 kind of a period, but the challenge was that the moment you would see the outcome of the AI, you would be able to say that what is real versus what is trash. And the challenge happened that because it was a lot of time in the trash kind of bucket, nobody paid atten attention to it. What we are finding in this cycle is that because AI is more trustworthy, there's a lot and lot of folks within healthcare that are paying attention to it. Now, as in any given kind of a hype cycle, there's a hype cycle going on that everyone wants to listen, they want to understand what's happening. There are a bunch of pilots that as a company we are undertaking with our customer in this area of Gen AI and how it can help ease the life of the provider and the caregiver at the end of the day because provider burnout is a real, real challenge. Just in the backyard over here, Kaiser Permanente had one of the largest kind of uh, strikes just as of like three to six months prior. So the burnout is very, very real. And the only way to solve that is by ensuring that more and more automation can happen in the workflow. And over there, Gen AI plays a big, big role. So again, there are a lot more use cases that will come to bear. There's a lot of hype going around at this point in time, but all in the right sense. But yeah, Mike. Yeah, and I, I think I'll go back to a point we made earlier about you know our, our customers are physicians and clinicians and you know people who are you know whose lives perhaps could right. be at stake. This is a highly regulated business, and so you know being an engineer and a data engineer is that AI is fantastic, but we're in a regulated environment. We have to be able to prove that our models are accurate, and to, to me, you can't do that without having a robust you know, lineage of that data, a good strong data management practice, and that the models, you know how the models get trained and what data is used in that training. And so we're being, like Sandy mentioned, we're being um, extremely cautious as we move forward in this space. And that's why we're focusing mostly on helping the clinicians with the burden that's been put on them, ironically, from the digitization business, there's a lot more requirement for documentation. So we're doing a lot of work to improve their productivity and relieve some of their, you know, their night, nighttime documentation efforts and, the, and that, those types, types of activities. Finding those efficiencies for them so that they can do more faster yeah. for the end customer and end individual. Yeah, and another one, interesting one from a data science perspective is you don't have to know you know, SQL programming or Python programming in order to ask a question of a database now. You can do it through text and through, you know, AI techniques. And we think that's going to be great, you know, for the business executives that don't have the time or, you know, or the energy to go out and try to find this data themselves. So. An exciting next chapter with the increased evolution of Gen AI and LLMs, the non-technical individuals, in, in this case, could be the doctors, allowing to drive increased impact to their Absolutely. customers. Absolutely. Like, there's a term that's used in healthcare which is called pajama time which is the providers when they have gone through their office visit during the day, they would actually spend two hours every night just documenting that stuff on their computer. Wow. And that's what leads to this burnout and all those kind of stuff. So again, it is a real problem in healthcare and with this Gen AI, with all these auto-scribing kind of functionality, analytics which is embedded at the point of care, you can help providers work at the top of their license or each of the caregiver work at the top of their license, which is all this thing around the productivity and the joy of care that we are promoting is all about. Well, gentlemen, I want to say thank you so much for spending 
time with me today here on Data Cloud Now. Really appreciate your insights and your perspectives. As you look out over the coming months, what's top of mind for both of you? Mike, let's start with you. Yeah, so I'll start, so AI of course. I mean, I think we've, we've talked about that. And getting the principles behind AI of strong data management. I've been, you know, I've been in the healthcare space for quite a while now, and I really do see health systems understanding what data management does for them and how it actually is going to promote these new technologies like AI and those types of things. And then the other kind of other technical area that we're really pushing is being part of the ecosystem, being able to take this data and insights that we get from whether it's the analytic environment or the AI environment and get it to the point of care, get it back into the record system because we have the ability to prove the data quality at the transactional level, you know, whether it's the EMR or, or the claims type system. And so that's a big area where we're investing from a technical perspective at Innovacer. Thank you, Mike. And Sandy, from your perspective, what are you focused on and sure. how can the audience learn more about everything that's happening? At no, Innovation? absolutely. I think from our perspective, the one thing that matters the most is the customer happiness, satisfaction, and it's at the end of the day, the provider productivity at the point of care when they're interacting with their own patients that how more impactful they can be. So a lot of focus from our perspective to all the things that Mike was talking about, be that from a data point of view, the analytics point of view, the AI point of view, and then the workflow aspect of it that how it can really reach to the right stakeholders who can take the right decision at the right point in time. And yeah, to learn more about us, uh, we will be like, again, if uh, there is a way for folks to be in touch with us, uh, we are happy to talk more. Absolutely, gentlemen. Well, I'm looking forward to continuing this conversation sure. over the coming months. Thank you so much for joining me on Data Cloud Now. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks for having us. And for the audience watching, I'm Ryan Green, and this is Data Cloud Now. Mm -hmm.